All right, here we are, Advent of Code 2021, day 11. Today is a Saturday, and I watched a lecture from the creator of Advent of Code who says they will put longer ones on the weekends when they know people have more time. So I'm anticipating a slightly longer one here on the 11th and 12th. It uh, looks like we're getting real deep in this cave here. If you don't understand anything I'm talking about, there's a YouTube video description so that I don't have to make the video longer. Let's go. Dumbo octopus. I like Dumbo. Uh, I like octopuses. All right. You enter a large cavern full of bioluminescent Dumbo octopuses. Oh, it's actually a type of octopus. Oh, okay. Oh, I see why it's called a Dumbo octopus because the the top part looks vaguely elephanty with the eyes. Okay. They seem to not like the Christmas lights on their submarine, so I turn them off. And now it's dark. But they're bioluminescent, so I can see. There are 100 octopuses neatly in a 10 by 10 grid. How nice. <laughs> Each octopus slowly gains energy over time and flashes brightly for a moment when its energy is full. Although your lights are off, you could navigate through the cave without discerning that if you could predict when the flashes of light will happen. They have an energy level. Your submarine can remotely measure the energy level of each octopus, your puzzle input, for example. The energy level of each octopus is a value between 0 and 9. Here, the top left octopus has a 5. The bottom right one has a 6, and so on. You can model the energy levels of in steps. During a single step, the following occurs. Oh, we have some cellular automata coming on. A little cellular automata, maybe? We'll see. The energy level of each octopus increases by one. All right, so we just plus one the whole freaking grid. That's easy enough. So we're going to make a grid. We're going to plus one the whole freaking thing. Any octopus with a, not, with a level greater than nine flashes. This increases the energy level of all adjacent octopuses by one. This is, <laughs> sounds like cellular automata to me, uh, including octopuses that are diagonal. Hmm. If this causes an octopus to have an energy level greater than nine, it also flashes, right? Ah, so there's a chain of flashing. Um, so this process continues as long as new octopuses keep having their energy level increased beyond, it's always by one, increased beyond nine, an octopus can only flash at most once per step. Finally, any octopus that flashed during this step has its energy level set to zero, right? So the 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 tricky part of this is, let's say you get a you get an eight here. Well, everything's going to be plus one, right? So first you just plus one everything. So all these eights here are going to be nines. So this nine, right? This is already an eight. This nine flashes and turns this into a nine. So if you've iterated, because it's diagonal, they said it even diagonals, right? Uh, including diagonals, right? So everything's plus one. This is now eight. This is nine. You go through, um, oh, greater than nine flashes. Okay, so every, right? So we do, no, no one flashes on the first go because there's no nines here. We go for the second run. Oh, all right, we go for the second run. Right. This is now a 10. This is a 9. This 10 flashes. This 9 becomes a 10. If you just iterated through this once, right, you would pass by this. It would be a 9 when you got to it. And you'd say, well, no flash. It's a 9. Keep going. 10, flash, 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 right? And then keep going. So what I think you need to do, right? is um, you need to basically keep track of like, hey, uh, right, you don't want to reset anyone to zero until you know you're all done, right? Um, but what you do is you go through, right? You find a flasher, right? You find a flasher, right? You got to, you, you flash it, okay? do 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 do, -do. Um, okay, here's what you got to do, ready? So you get a list of all your coordinates here, right? You keep track of which ones have already flashed, 
and you write those down, okay? Um, you go through, and you say, all right, so there's, there's a list of potentially still could flash and a list of already flashed. And at the start, it's all potentially could flash. You go through the potentially could flash list. If you see a 10, right, you add that spot to the already flashed list. Okay. Uh, and then you add one, right, to all the adjacent ones, including diagonals. Okay. Um, as long, but only, right, if those things that you added one to are still in the uh, potentially could flash list, right? Um, now, if you go through and you find something and the, you're going down the potentially could flash list and you see something that's less than 10, right? You move it to the didn't flash list, but whenever you flash, right? So whenever you flash, if one of those didn't flash items um, is adjacent to the one that just flashed, you move it back to the potentially could flash possibility, right? Um, you know, right? And now, but basically, it, right? So um, that way you're basically marking, you're going through, right? And it's like, yes, yeah, someone who didn't, you're going through them. And if one of them didn't flash, it's like, well, it could flash in the future, but we're going to mark it as tentatively done. Right, tentatively already been checked. If it's flashed, oh, it's already been checked. We're we're done. We never have to check that cell again. But if you checked a cell and didn't flash it, okay, well we'll put it aside, right, for now. Uh, and we might check it again later. We might not. We don't. You know, we'll see. And then you just keep going through the unchecked ones, and right when you hit the bottom. Right, um, basically, either every cell is going to either be in that didn't flash but had a chance to flash, right, kind of zone, or it's going to be in the uh, already flashed zone, right? There, right? You know, over the course of or, while you're processing it, some of those kind of maybes might have come back to life and then gone back to sleep again, right? As they got incremented, they got rechecked. But, um, you know, possibly recursively, uh, but otherwise, you know, I guess what you could do is you could just have, right, you do an iterative process, right? If you do an iterative process, do, 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 right? Okay, we checked you, you, we checked you, we checked you. But whenever we have a flash, we stop our iterative process. We, like, pause it and do a recursive process. Toot, 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 toot. Um, I guess the problem, that works fine, I think, for checking, for back checking, right? So if you do here in your sequential process and then recursively check for flashes going back, that's fine. But what could happen is if you're doing your iterative process... Right, and let's say you check, you check this, which has become a ten. You recursively check, right? So you'd have to make sure either the recursive check only goes backwards to ones that have already been checked, right? Because if you recursively check forwards, well, we didn't even reach here iteratively yet, right? Uh, I guess you could. What if you just recursively? I don't know. We'll work on it. Okay. Adjacent flashes can cause an octopus to flash on a step, even if it begins that step with very little energy. Yep. All right, because this one, pew, 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 this guy got juiced up. All right, after step one, boom, right? After step two, yep, this is cellular automata for real. An octopus is highlighted when it flashed during the given step. Here is how the larger, larger example above progresses. After step 10, 
there have been a total of 204 flashes, right? After 100 steps, there have been that many flashes, giving the starting energy levels in your puzzle input, which is going to be huge. Oh, not, it's 10 by 10. Okay. Uh, how many flashes are there after 100 steps? Is part two going to be like, oh, way more steps, and it, there's, a, there's a performance impact if you do this uh, a slow way? I think so. That's what I'm going to guess. Uh, but we're just going to do this, you know, the straightforward way like we always do. Okay. Let's go. Oh, okay. We don't need these. We need day 11. Okay. And we're going to need our inputs. So test input. There's our real input. Okay. And then uh, Dumbo Octave. Dumbo octopi. <laughs> octopi. Is that right? Octopi? Or is it octopuses? Let's see what the internet has to say. Octopi or octopuses? Get away, weird website. Just tell me the answer. Octopuses? Fine. 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 There. You happy? Okay, let's parse that input. So for each line, we're just going to make a two-dimensional grid of integers, I suppose. Um, so let's do that. Uh, so how did we do that again? All right, we just did uh, int x for x in line. I think pretty sure that's how we did it before. Five, four, eight, three. <laughs> Looks right to me. Okay. Let's make another class, Octopus Grid. Uh, the grid. There we go. Okay. And now we're going to do, uh, we'll make a function for, um, basically one step, right? Uh, we'll just make a grid, a grid step. Sounds good. Okay, so let's step this grid. So the first step is uh, increment grid. Uh, so we know that the input is guaranteed to be, you know, 10 by 10. So I don't think we need to, like, bother checking the length and the width and all that. I think we can just uh, go right ahead uh, and immediately just do range, you know, 10. Uh, what? Okay. Um... Range 10 will give us the 0 through 9 that we're looking for. Okay, so for x in range 10, for y in range 10, and remember because the 
right? But the X and Y are flipped. We messed this up the other day, but it doesn't really matter uh, here because we're just incrementing. But regardless, why we'll get it right just because. There we go. Increment the grid. So the first step is uh, self dot increment grid. Great. Okay. The next step is to. Well, the final step is going to be reset. Um, <laughs> you know, I suppose actually. Uh, We can just incrementally do the plus ones for the flashes. I mean, recursively do the plus ones for the flashes. Um, it's just basically just doing plus ones. You start getting like tens, elevens, twelves, right? As long as you keep track of who's already flashed. Yeah, we need to keep track of the ones that have already flashed. Hmm. <laughs> well, we got some car, car honking outside. I, I don't know if that's getting picked up or not. Hmm, how are we going to do this? Let's see. Um, <laughs> well, we need to we need to iterate over all of them to find in, in the first place no matter what, right? This this has to be done. Right? And then if self.grid y x is greater than 9, Then we have to self dot flash x y. All right, you got to flash it, right? There's no, there's no getting around that part. Um, yeah, I think if we re like iterate over the hundred thing repeatedly. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. hmm. I think what if we go with my original plan, right? So it's we got unchecked uh coordinates, right? So if unchecked, we got checked, and now we have flashed. I have a feeling this is going to fail on part two. OK? Uh, so the checked ones could come back to becoming unchecked. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not struggling to do this. I'm just struggling to do this elegantly and beautifully, right? So I guess while there are unchecked coordinates... Let's do this. There we 
There we go. Oh, but they asked us to, we're actually, the problem we're actually trying to solve is to count the flashes, right? How many flashes are there? We got to keep that in mind too. We have to count the flashes. Um, yeah. Oh, but there can never be more than... Um, a hundred flat the, uh, there's a maximum of a hundred flashes right so at the end we're actually just gonna uh, return the length of the flashed chords right so while there are still unchecked ones right uh while there are unchecked coordinates Right, iterate through the unchecked coordinates. So while there are still ones in there, right? Um, if self dot grid y x uh, is greater than nine. Right, so we know that we're looking at an unchecked one, one that's never been looked at, or one that was looked at, but uh, wasn't flashed. And we also need to add back uh, if self dot grid x y is less than uh, is less than ten, right? Then uh, checked coordinates dot append x y, right? So we found one. It, it's not a flasher. We're going to put it in the checked bin, right? Uh, and remove it from the unchecked bin. And that's that. Okay. Else, so we found this is a flasher, right? If we found a flasher, then we're going to increment all the ones around it. And if any of them are in a uh, checked, we'll move them to unchecked. Okay? So we've got to iterate from zero. Well, from negative one, negative one, all the way through one, one. And we have to avoid the, um, all right, so actually let's make a function for that. Let's like get adjacencies, right? Uh, get adjacents, uh, adjacent adjacencies. So, uh, we got negative one, zero, and one, but not, not zero, 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 zero gets skipped. So for X in range, well, we can just say for X in, uh, Negative one, zero, one. Y in negative one, zero, one. Uh, 
if x um, if uh, x is not equal to zero and y is not equal to zero. No, that's not right. We want to say we want to basically if both of them are zero, we don't want to do anything. Uh, we can actually do that a different way. But anyway, chords dot uh, append. Uh, oh, x delta y delta. Okay, chords dot append x plus x delta y plus y delta. Okay, there we go. I think that's going to work. And then at the end, we could remove the, you know, the self option, which is going to be in there because the zero zero is going to get hit. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, should I just do it the recursive way? Pro that's I think the only issue with the recursive way is the already been checked cells thing, right? That's what's getting me. It would be so easy to do it recursively if it wasn't for the don't flash again. Because if you just blindly recurse, right, you're going to flash multiple times. Um. Well, I wonder if you blindly recurse, but you only flash on exactly a 10, right? You only flash on the exact mark of 10. No, because what could happen is the, the initial increment could move, for example, the second cell in the grid to 10, the first cell could already be 10 also. You start off your recursion with the very first cell. You flash it. The second cell becomes an 11. And then you skip it because uh, it's already been flashed. If you use the rule of exactly 10. You need some global already been flashed thing. Um, some global already been flashed list to keep track. What if you went through and uh, oh, I guess what you could do is you could be like uh, You could recurse the entire grid at one. Instead of recursing one cell at a time, you could recurse the whole grid, right? So you look at the whole grid. You, f you just find all of the tens just to start with, right? And then you um, just mark down a list of all the tens, what they are. You don't actually increment anything yet. You just write down a list of, okay, these are all the tens I found, okay? And then you go down that list of all the tens, and if any of their, uh, and you add one to every adjacent thing, right? Uh, and then, even though you're not supposed to mark those tens as zero until the end, you mark them as zero anyway. 
right? You mark them as zero anyway, even though you're not supposed to yet. And then you look and say, okay, well, what's greater than what's greater than nine, right? In the whole grid, you make a list, right? But if there are zeros that you're you're hitting, you don't add to those, right? You just go for the zeros right away. So I think we can do that. Okay, so I think I, we're going to try that method. So what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, we'll say, the ones that have flashes, right? Uh, so for each one, uh, if, if self.grid, um, y y x um is greater than 9 flashed coordinates 10 x y okay so we know which ones are going to flash okay They're already going to flash. So then what we do is we want to set them all to zero and add one to their, um, to their friends. So for, oh, so we can actually set them to zero right away because we know which, where they were, right? Set her to zero, right? They flash, they're done. Okay, and then when we're done with that, four x, y, n flashed coordinates, right? So for each one, Oh. Flash count equals zero. Uh. Right, we want to uh, add one to all the adjacencies. So for each one, uh, for Uh, great, uh, there we go. Right. Uh, so for each coordinate, for each spot we flashed, we're going to say for adjacent in for adjacent coordinate in uh, self dot get adjacencies. All right, so get all the adjacent spots. Go 
plus 1, right? Um, I see what we can do here. If the length of flash coordinates equals zero, right? The, the, the grid is spent. Return the flash count, right? We scanned the grid, and we didn't find anyone greater than nine, so we're done. If self.grid y x is not equal to zero. Okay, just return, return the count. Uh, okay. All this count flashes now. This is still counting flashes on a single step here. Um, so we actually don't need the. Uh, okay. Uh, process flashes. Okay, so the count is zero. Right. Look through the grid. If you see anyone greater than nine, add them to the list. Set that spot to zero, right? If we didn't find anyone, that means we're done and we can return, you know, zero, right? Now, if we did find someone, right, which, right, if we found someone, there was at least one spot that was greater than that was 10 or more then go through those spots and look at the adjacent spots uh and oh we got to remove the one we got to go here and remove the ones that are less than 0 uh or is that remove xy or greater than nine. Let's just do this. Uh, final x equals x plus x, xd. Final y equals y plus yd. If fx is less than zero, well, if fx is greater than zero and fx is less than 9. x in x good equals fx uh, greater than 0. Oh, equal to 0. And fx. Uh, less than 10. Y good uh, if X good and Y good and uh, add it in and then remove. There we go.
Yeah, and then you remove the the because the zero zero is gonna get hit, right? So we would just remove it. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, if we go through the whole grid and nothing flashes, just return zero. Okay. Then go through the ones if the, you found more flashes, right? Go through them. Look at each adjacent spot, right? If that spot is not zero, add one to it. Okay. Then uh, flash count plus equals, right? Uh, right? You add to the flash count, right? And then you return the flash count. Yeah. Right, so you, you go through all the ones that flashed, you add one to all of them, right? And then oh, you go back up here and you do this again, right? And then you do this, right? So basically, this will keep, basically you're just looping over this, right? By calling this function again and again and again and again until you hit this case. And that returns a zero. Um, which would make all of these, right? Which means this wouldn't get called again. And now it returns, which means all of them can return. And then the top one will return the top level flash count. And that's for a single day. Okay. And then. Check flashes, process flashes. Increment the grid, process the flashes. Okay, and that's one day. Um, cool. Let's make a print grid function just because it'll help for debugging. Uh, so it's a list of integers, right? Basically, do the reverse of the parser, right? The reverse of the parser. We'll print 10 stars. Okay, so now we have a debugging thing we can use. Okay, and... Okay, it's all taken care of. Give me a... 
octopus grid. Okay, let's try to do some debugging. Why are we up there? Why are we up there? Now we're where we're gonna be. Okay. Do we print the... Oh, we forgot parentheses, but that's okay. We can just do... There we go. Okay, let's look at the input, actually. Okay, 5483, great. Now we'll call um, step. None. Oh, there were none but we went plus one. Right, after step one, six, five, nine, four, two, five, four, three, three, four, yep. So but there weren't any flashes. Step two, we should see something. Oh, we did see something on step two. Eight eight zero seven four seven six five 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 zero eight nine zero eight seven zero five four zero 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 zero. Okay, so it looks correct, but we're not getting the count. The count was was zero. So let's figure that why we're counting wrong. Oh, because we're either returning zero. Right here, we're just returning flash count. We, oh, self dot process flashes. Right. <laughs> um, so if we didn't find any, do that. Turn. Hold on, now we're gonna call itself again. How are we gonna do this? Hold on, we gotta count a zero, okay? If it's the null case, there's nothing to do. Yeah, return the zero. Okay, so otherwise, we found some. Oh, you know what we can do? Uh, you just want to know how many flashes happened in a day. You can just count the zeros, right, that are there at the end. So you don't need the count. Hmm. Flash count equals the length of the flash coordinates. And then 
do that. Yeah. Uh, let's see what happens if we do that. Simple. Um, so after 10 steps, there should be 204 flashes. Thirty-five, forty-five. See step two: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, two, one, two, 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 three, two, four, two, five, two, six, two, seven, two, eight, two, nine, thirty, three, one, two, two, three, four. That looks right. So we need to get to step ten. So that was step three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. And it looks like this. That looks right. And zero plus 35 and 45 is 80. 96. 96 and 8 is 104. 105. 112. 112 and 24 plus 24 plus 39 plus 29. 204, that's the right answer. Okay, I think it's working. So now what we can do is we can just do steps. We can do step, and then we can do steps. Um, Mm-hmm. Uh, do that. Just do like that, actually. Okay, part one result equals octopus grid 100 steps. Okay. We don't need this right side anymore. So 1656 is correct. We'll switch it to input text. And we got 1681. Oops, wrong one. And I think that's the right answer for part one. That's the right answer. All right, let's get ready for part two. Oh, boy. Individual flashes aren't bright enough to navigate. However, you might have a better option. The flashes seem to be synchronizing. In the example above, the first time all octopuses flash simultaneously is step 195. If you can calculate the exact moments when the octopuses will all flash simultaneously, you should be able to navigate through the cavern. What is the first step during which all octopuses flash? Oh, this actually isn't too bad at all. Uh, although it might take a while to iterate and keep doing steps forever. <laughs> but it's actually not too bad. Uh, to code it, I hope it doesn't take forever to run it. The moment when all octopuses will flash simultaneously. The first step during which all octopuses flash. Okay. We can actually do that because we're counting on every step like this. So um, let's do a little copy paste. So um, find big flash right so to find the big flash uh, we need to say um, we 
We might be off by one. So step zero, right? The step starts at zero. Uh, while self dot step is not equal to a hundred. I think this will work. So it's basically going to say, hey, all right, so while self.step, right? So step, <laughs> did, what, is that step less than 100, right? Did we write the count of flashes there? Wasn't 100 flashes? OK, well, then that count a step and step again and step again and step again and step again and step again, right? And then return the step. So let's run this, uh, find big flash. So we need to reset our octopus grid because it's, um, right? So we can just do that by just making a new grid. From the parsed input. But we're gonna have to uh, find big flash. Right? Is this going to work? One seventy five? Is that true? Let's, um, you know what we can do to test that? We can test that. Well, hold on. Let's do the test input. Uh, In the above example, all the first time all octopuses flash simultaneously is 195. All right, well, let's do the test input. And it does it give us a 190? Uh, it's a 94. So that is incorrect. <laughs> incorrect. Um, Sixteen fifty six was correct, yep. So they all flash. Hmm. All right. Well, uh let's do this. Print step and print uh self dot display grid. So this is gonna print out ninety four oh. 94, so it's an 88888, a 93, and then 94, it stopped. Okay, so why is, why does it think that that's an all flash situation? None. So these nuns, something on the display grid thing. Um, where's the display grid function? There it is. I want to figure this part out first. Why is the display grid printing a none here? Row. Row is not the self.grid.
19, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, bottom. None. Uh, why did it do that? Oh, because it's returning none. Oh, it's because we're printing the uh, display grid instead of just returning display grid. That's why. We don't need to print self display grid. We just need to do display grid. That's why we're getting those nuns. Okay. So that solves the mystery of the nuns. Not the mystery of the nuns. Uh, okay. Pretty sure the bug we have is not going to be a big one. Uh, I just want to find it carefully. That step is less than 100. And a step is returning. The process flashes, and the process flashes is returning the flash count. Okay. So actually, now that we know part two, we could revert this to the just counting of the um, the counting of the zeros um, method, right? So let's try to figure out what's wrong with this one, and then we'll revert to the counting of the zeros if we can't. What are you mad about? What's this yellow thing? What's this yellow thing about? Oh, it's like a white space? Yeah, okay. Uh, all right, so uh, display grid. Uh, let's do step first. Ninety four. It's strange that they say the correct answer is step one ninety four, and we're we're like off by one here. I think as we're counting steps, there wouldn't be a step zero, right? So after step one ninety five, so we want to let's do this. Oh, okay. Stop it. Stop. <laughs> um It says in the in the problem here. It's really interesting because it says after step 195. So I think what's happening is that the hundred steps of part one have already been done, right? I think that's our issue, is that when the reset I attempted, this reset, is not actually causing a reset. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to code a, a reset method. Right, I'm going to code a reset method here. Uh, there we go.
Part two is still 95, even though I have the reset. Let's make a copy. Let's do copy. What? Part two result. So reset and find the big flash and it's still 95 instead of 195. What is step we can figure this out actually? We can stop this at step one and see if it if it matches the test input. Then we'll know if a hundred steps have already been done yet or not. Oh, it just starts printing it too right away. Yeah, it looks like 100 steps have already been done. Uh, what is going on here? Let's make a deep copy. Still not right. Oh. Why is this? It's hitting this. Why is it hitting it on 94 instead of. Oh my God. Uh, let's do this. So right from the start, we'll take a look at the grid. Yeah, it's or it doesn't that doesn't look right. That's not what we started with in the test input. Did we switch to test input? We did. Let's just do this. Yeah, that's not that is not the starting. Yep. Why is the copy not working? Do we need the deep copy? Something like that. No. What the heck is going on? I don't understand what the heck. The 
parsed input should be untouched. Right? It's getting copied here. All right, let's just do this. Uh, part one. Finally, okay. So that worked at the at resetting. The the reset function did not work. Okay, so now we don't we don't need any of this stuff. Oh my god, do we need that? What the heck? What the hell is going on? Okay, fine. We'll just do we'll do it then. <laughs> if it works, it works. I don't I don't know what the hell is going on with the copying uh here of the parsed input. Somehow it's being shared. It's like it's in scope all the way. Um I, I I've never you know doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I got the right answer. <laughs> I don't know. I think I got the right answer. Uh, we got the one ninety five that we're looking for, right? Um. Yeah, just somehow this steps was operating on the original parsed input, even though we we're making, you know, it's like I could make a copy of it here. And then somehow, right, even though the part two input is another different copy of the original parsed input, it was still modified. Unless I also did a, like a deep copy here. What if we do... This is really driving me off the wall. Look at that. What the hell? Does that, if we do that, can we get away with this? Okay, we can't. I guess we need a deep copy. I thought I knew this stuff, but I guess I didn't. Yeah, yeah. okay, the difference between shallow and deep is relevant for compound objects, objects that contain other objects, like lists or class instances. A shallow copy, a new compound object, and then references into it the objects found in the original. Ah, because we have a list of lists, we need a deep copy. 
constructs a new compound object recursively copies of its objects found in the original. Okay. So we do need the deep copy. Uh, cool. So actually, we can just do this. Can do that. Because the octopus grid otherwise is going to modify the parsed input in place. And thus the hundred steps get operated on the second. Right. Uh so this is this is our reset here. Right. Ah, uh, okay. I wonder if we could just get away with this. Will this work? Yes, okay, so just the deep copy in the one spot is enough to work. Okay, that mystery is solved now, terrific. Uh, so we switch to input.txt and we should have our right answer, right? 195 was the correct answer for the test input. And the regular input, so 276. That's the right answer. We're done. Be back tomorrow.